Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10, you got to say amen. amen. <laughs> Ain't got to hold on. Hold on. Absolutely. Ain't looking nobody. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Hebrews chapter 10. All right, everybody good? Amen. All right, Hebrews chapter 10. And before I forget, as well, I don't forget the uh, uh, fundraiser for Paul and Nancy at the end of the end of this month. We're going in with four square. We've got sign up sheets right here where we still need desserts, drinks, sauce, volunteers, all kind of good stuff like that. So make sure you come and sign up. Sign up for that. Uh, and also the uh, South Mountain. Having a food giveaway Saturday morning at 10 o'clock, and it's sponsored by Washington Community. And uh, if anybody needs anything, they'd be glad to help you out. So go up there. Like I said, if you need something or know somebody that needs something, send them up that way. Uh, Hebrews chapter 10, Scripture says, verse 22 Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, Lord. God, we bow before you, Lord. God, we're such needful people, Lord. And God, we're always standing in need, Lord God, for a true move, Lord God. A touch, Lord God, that can only come from you, sir, and you alone, Lord. And God, I pray that only you can, Lord God. You just, Lord, have mercy on us, Father, that only you can, Lord God. Any among us lost and undone, that you just run, Father. I pray that you today, God, you save, Lord, for several life is too late, God. Lord, I want to thank you, God, Lord, for everything that you've done good, Father, by you and you alone, Lord, anything at all done, Lord God. And I pray, God, you have your way, Father, Lord, hide behind your cross. God, forgive me, Lord, my family, Lord, I love you. God, I lift up your name, Lord, the name that's above every name, Lord. And I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. <coughs> Hebrews chapter 10 is, is famous for many different scriptures and we'll get into some of them. The book of Hebrews. It's a powerful book. If you ever need encouragement, if you ever get down or low, I encourage you to get in the book of Hebrews. It'll give you a boost. It'll give you a power boost. give you a lift up. There's some good stuff in the book of Hebrews. Good stuff in the book of Hebrews. But tonight, here he is, taking up. He said the first thing we got to do is, so you must understand that 2015, the church should have already assumed this rightful position. Yeah. Now we ain't doing too good a job, but we need, we need to be reminded that we need to assume our rightful position as the lighthouse of Jesus Christ. Amen. So the Bible says right here that one of the first things that we got to do, you know, it always comes back to your heart, don't it? Yeah. It always comes back to your heart. You know, I thank God about that. I thank God that, listen to what it says, let us draw near with a true heart. It don't say nothing about outside. It don't say how the outside looks, how the outside. It don't say not a thing about the outside. I love the fact that when we stand before a holy God, He will not judge us according to the outside. He will judge us according to the inside. The Bible said, for the church to assume its properties, we must draw nigh to God with a true heart. With a true heart. You say, well, What's the difference? Well, nowadays, you call it? Morning. And it is a little chilly in here, I must confess. <laughs> you might burn it up in here. It's a little bit, a little bit in here. And a true heart. The thing about a true heart is, once again, we know the scripture says through the bottom of the heart my speaks. But I want to tell you there's a lot of people that have not totally given Jesus their heart 100% and what you see on the outside is what you see on the inside. That's why a lot of times people struggle because I want to tell you when a child of God, or excuse me, when a, when a, a child of death is converted to a child of God, he's still going to go through struggle. He's still yeah, going to go through trials. He's still going to go through situations. He's still going to go through circumstances. 
Matter of fact, I want to tell you, you're still going to struggle with stuff you're Amen. struggling with when it's saved. If anybody tells you differently, it's a lie. Yeah. I want to tell you, we go through some struggle, but what you've got to remember is uh, that now you ain't who you was, uh -huh. so you got uh -huh. one that'll help you through if you lean on him. Yeah. you got one you can count on and depend on. When you can't depend on it, you can't count on nobody else. Uh, and that is none other than Jesus Christ himself. Uh, as a matter of fact, so many times... We see that God's people, uh, when they get saved, you know what happens a lot of times? They fall short. Somebody looks down on them, and then they get out. Yeah, right. That's why they, they get out. I'm going to tell you, if getting out was what you ought to do when you fall short, I'd have got out a long time ago, and I wouldn't be long enough yeah. to get away from something. Yeah. That's why I'm messed up. I'm yeah. falling short. I admit, I'm talking about since yeah. I have given my life to yeah. Jesus. Yeah. I probably have screwed up more now than I ever have. Yeah. But he still loves me. I'm still saved. I'm still here. I'm still single. And I'm still going to sin. Can I get away? It ain't about that time. It's about this time. Come on. He said the heart. We got to draw near with a true heart. Who can know our hearts better than the Lord? And the Bible said this. Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of I'm going to hang my hat right here for a minute. Because one thing you can have in Jesus, you can have full assurance. You can have full confidence. You can have full trust. You can have full belief in Jesus. People will let you down. The yeah. church yeah. let you down. Yeah. Uh, I want to tell you, Jesus letting somebody down ain't even in his vocabulary. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I, I want to hang my, my, my hat on this right here just for a second. Be brief. If, if I talk with different religions, religion, talk with different kind of names, different people tell me different things about how they feel about stuff, how they believe about stuff. You know, ain't funny. That we all we all got one thing in common. We're gonna make it in, we're gonna come by the blood of the Lamb. Right. Come by the blood, there's no other way. Yeah. But we sit, we're talking and different people, some feel because the the, the, the Baptist beliefs, the, the ones they always say they'll have to be talking and not work. Let me let me break down for you real fast. If you are born again, you will not want to raise hell and live for the devil. Can I get away from that? That's right. You will not want to do that. Matter of fact, this is what ticked me. That when God saved me, yeah. I am saved whether I feel saved. Yeah. Amen. Whether I want to be saved. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> whether you think I'm saved. Yeah. Whether the saint think I'm saved, I am still saved. Amen. Matter of fact, I want to tell you what happened though so often. Uh, with the once saved, always saved. God. I, and I hate that word. I, I, I really do. I despise yeah. that. I despise that word. Because people use that as a crutch. Yeah. Use it as a spare time yeah. to raise hell and the devil all week long and say, right. well, I'll get to church on Sunday. Everything will be okay. Right. I want to tell you, you better check yourself, yeah. baby, yeah. because you probably ain't born again for real. Yeah. That's why I'm going to see you. So often in life, we stop short of true salvation. Yeah. That's right. yeah. When you are truly born again, yeah. when you yeah. are truly... Let me tell you something, baby. Uh -huh. There ain't an eraser out there that can block my name. Redeem them. Redeem them. Man, I don't care what nobody says. What nobody brings up. What Jesus, brother, Peter, has done. He has done. Fire. But you cannot depend on what your mom's got. Or what your grandma's got to get you in. You got to get one for yourself. I just feel better than that. I said all that. <laughs> the Bible says we've got to draw near the true heart in full assurance. Full assurance of faith. <laughs> full assurance. Full assurance. Full assurance means I ain't got to worry about what tomorrow brings. My friend, those people said, take a no load tomorrow, but I'm going to take care of myself. That's right. It don't even make no difference. Uh -huh. If tomorrow don't come, it don't make no difference. Uh -huh. no. But you can have full assurance <coughs> in the faith and know yeah. that you are Jesus and you belong to Him. Uh -huh. That's right. Uh, but 
You know what many people want to know is one of two things. They want to know they love. That's why God birthed his church yes. to love on those that are unlovable, yeah. to love on those everybody looks down yeah. on, uh, to love on those that are downtrodden and cast out, uh, to love on those. If you got to tell you something, if you've got truth, what we need is we don't need all this new modernized religion. No. Right, come on. That's right. Amen. No wonder the scripture says, seek ye out the old path. Yes, in the old way. Yes. Because in that old path, uh, in that old way is yeah. where you're going to find peace. Uh, you're going to find joy. Oh, you're you. going to find rest for your weary soul. Yeah. Uh, that's why I'm going to tell you something. I look back. Uh, if it was good enough for my great, great grandma, yeah. uh, let God, I'm going to tell you Jesus is still good enough yeah. for me. Uh, yeah. Every yeah. matter of fact, particularly the other day, this old man come up and he had a, a Bible. And what we ain't come to hold on different translation Bible, but this is what he said. He said, if, you, if you, you need this book right here, he said, this Bible right here will take you farther in life. Come on. He said, it'll take you farther in life. Bob McCurry said, I don't know about you, but heaven fall up where I'm going. <laughs> he said, if your Bible will take you farther in heaven, have that, I don't want nothing to do with it. Get a good witness. I'm going to tell you, heaven, baby, is it fall up where I'm going? But he said this. He said, you can have that full of shirts, that full of shirts. That's what people need today. They just want full of shirts. Let me tell you what. When you're born again for real, you can sleep at night time. You can sleep in the daytime. When you got full of shirts, you don't worry about nothing else. When you got full of shirts, you don't chew your nails down through the nub. When you got full of shirts, you don't pluck a hair out of your head. When you got full of shirts, full of shirts means that you completely and totally trust and have surrendered every plan to Jesus. And you get no matter the night. But the Bible said it. He said, draw near. Full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience. Our bodies washed. With pure water. See, let me break down the difference between born again and turn over a new leaf, if I can. That's okay. When you turn over a new leaf, this is a poor illustration, but it's going to be okay. <laughs> turn it over a new leaf, it's like peeing in the shower. <laughs> You wash your feet and get them clean, and then you pee, and guess what? That's right. And don't sit here, man. And act like you don't know what I'm talking about. That's the same thing to turn over a new leaf. That's right. Turn over a new leaf means you wouldn't have a clean stalk with it. Yeah. That's right. And yeah. what happens is when you pee in the shower and you get out, you stink just about as dead when you got in. Amen. But when Jesus gets a hold of you, when he washes you, when he cleans you, when he fixes you, when he makes you over, I want to tell you, there is no uh, you can look, you can look, you can search. You will not find the first evidence at all. Uh, that's why right, of sin. You will not find it at all when Jesus. Uh, that's why right, when Jesus gets a hold of you. When Jesus gets a hold of you, I want to tell you, baby. They can't nobody fix you up like Jesus can. They can't nobody clean you up like Jesus can. And see, that's the difference. When He does something, He does it forever. Can I get a witness? When He does something. He don't do it halfway. Yeah. Right, baby. When Jesus yeah. does something, he does it all the way. Yeah. He does it all the way. So the Bible said this. Listen to what it said. He told him here in verse 22. He said, you had your heart sprinkled from evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. 
See, you got to understand that pure water don't come out of the sink. Right. Pure water don't come out of a bathtub. Right. Pure water don't come out of a bathtub. Right. Hey, I'm talking about pure water that comes from the throne of God right. in the name yes. of the Holy yes. Ghost himself. Yes. But if yes. you want to talk about pure water, man, uh -huh. you got to talk about the Holy Ghost. Yes. That's not yes. the Holy Ghost. Uh, that's where purity comes from. Yes. He'll come from the Holy Ghost. It'll come by the Holy Ghost. It'll come through the Holy Ghost. Or it will not happen at all. Yes. That's what we talked about before. Baptism is nothing more than a symbol. Yes, come on. That's all it is, guys. Yeah. Yeah. Say what you want to. Baptism has never saved the first person. That's right. Yeah. There's more people in hell that was baptized. That's right. Come on. Jesus saves, not baptism. Yes. Can I get a witness right there? Right. Goes on down, verse 23. Listen to what it says. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith. Without waiting. Amen. Bless you. Bless you. <laughs> what he said is. He said without waiting. <laughs> So let us hold fast. See, that's the key. If what God gives you is forever, and it is, why would you want to let go and try anything else? Why would you want to let go and try anything else? So listen to what it says. That's what 23 says. Let us hold fast. Hold fast. Without waiting. He's saying you can know. Yes. You can know. He's saying that you won't doubt, you won't struggle. But you can have confidence in the Lord. He's saying you can hold fast. That's why like sometimes, God, when we struggle, when we get so low, it seems like we can't get nowhere else. It seems like we're low as you go. Everybody ever felt low? You felt they might get low this week like me. I don't tell you, baby. You can't this week. This whole week has been a struggle. Right. This whole week I've been out there, I've been in the fight of my life. Oh, yeah. That's why I've had Satan tell me all kinds of stuff. I don't know if he's talking to nobody else, but I'm going to tell you, baby. He's hanging out of my house. Yeah. Tell me all kinds of stuff by the time to quit, time to fall the time. He ain't doing no good. He ain't doing no good there. And you know what always makes me feel better? Come on. It's what I've got to hold with the king. Yeah. Yeah. And I say, Jesus. Yeah. Oh. If I'm going there, I'm taking you with me. That's my Jesus. If I'm going to mess up, I'm going to mess up holding on to you. Jesus, if I'm going to quit, I'm going to quit trusting in you. Jesus, I want to tell you what makes me feel better than that. It's when I feel a hug come from the other world. That's why they always something makes me feel better. When I feel that hug from the other side. When I feel that love from the other side. When I feel that wind blow through from the other side. And it thrill my soul. I like what preach comes to the call liquid sunshine. I like when God sees liquid sunshine my way from the crown of my head down to the soles of my feet and fill me up. Hey, something about, you know what? It's easy to love somebody, but when you get loved back, it just makes you feel better. And yeah. you can know that not only does if you love the Lord, baby, I'm going to tell you, He loves you. Right. Ain't nothing like being loved on by the Lord. He goes on and says this. Let us not, excuse me, let us consider one another to provoke unto love and the good works. Amen. That's right. Now don't be a trouble, mate. Right. <coughs> love one another. That's right. Well, lift up one another. That's right. In the Bible says if you do this stuff, you promote good works. That's the thing nowadays. And I say this every week. And I felt bad about repeating myself to listen to this man as they preach. This is what he said. He said, after church, so the woman comes to the job and said, I heard you preach that before. This is what he said. He said, well, what I said wasn't worth repeating. I should have said it the first time. Amen. Amen. I come to tell you. Why well, I'm in God's house, the people don't want to keep their mouth shut. Yeah, that's it. That's right. Amen. 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 People in the house of God do not know when to shut their mouth. 
we do more damage with this than we've ever done with this. If you can love somebody you know that can't stand you, that has done you wrong, that wants you to fall short, that wants you to fail, that you know has lied on you, baby. If you can just love them, what's what God will do in your life and what's what God will do in their life in spite of who they are. Matter of fact, we got the script said this, verse 24, let's live. 25, not forsaking the assembly of thyself together Amen. as the manner of some is. We'll stop right here. I hear all the time that people have quit going to church because they stopped up these little home churches. Yeah. Now hear me out. That's nothing wrong with coming together at your home. There's nothing wrong with that. Matter of fact, you better do that. Yes. And you can say, well, the that script in the New Testament that's what they did? Hold on. The reason they've done that in the New Testament was because they were persecuted. They couldn't come to fellowship in a church like what we got right now. That's why I'm going to tell you what home churches are to most people. It's just a lame excuse to yeah. stay at the house and get back to the recliner, eat jelly donuts, watch a football game, and get with like that. Yeah. That's why I'm going to tell you what you got to do. We got to come together about the thing. Come together, people say, well, we can come together anyway. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can. I believe we can come together and Walmart lift up the name Jesus. I believe we can come together and Walmart lift up the name Jesus. So, and what it comes down to is, are you doing that? But the Bible said, don't forsake the sin. We've got to come together. Why? Because we need each other. We need each other. That's right. We need to pray for each other. That's why we need to lift up each other while we're in. We need to encourage each other. Face it, whether you like it or not. I need y'all. That's right. Amen. We need you. Go on and say this. The Bible said, as a man of some is, but exhorting one another. Amen. Lift each other up. Encourage. Yes. Encourage. Yes. Don't discourage. Yes. Encourage. Yes. Don't bring them down. Lift them up. Amen. And the Bible said that for this simple fact. The Bible said, exhorting one another so much the more as you see the day Amen. Approach. Yeah. Sometimes you wonder, well, God knows. You know, if Jesus come back 30 seconds now, well, he know you're saved by the look you got on your face. Oh. <laughs> Amen. Oh, my gosh. I look out sometimes and I make me want to throw up. I'm going to make my life as good as I think it is. Everybody have one. Thank you or not, what's more than that? You ain't got salvation, you got a fire case that even the death is going to be swimming right there. Well, lady, bless God to take care of that. You need to take a whole pipe of them or something, I'm going to tell you. If the whole lot needed to smile, then it's a friend. If the whole lot needed to laugh, then it needed to get mad. I'm going to tell you something, baby. We need to smile and be happy and know that the day and the hour is fast approaching. No matter of fact, the Bible said, everybody said, well, where is the promise? Yeah. Where is it at? They said for thousands of years Jesus is coming back. Got new for you. He's still coming back. Yes, he is. He's yes, still yes, coming yes. back. Yes. It don't matter what nobody says. It don't matter. You'd be surprised when the people are giving up. Yeah. On the, that's right on the Word of God. Uh, I want to tell you, I personally uh, get disappointed every night when I go to work and he ain't coming back. I get disappointed in the morning when I see he ain't coming back. I want to tell you, I look for him. Yeah. I long for him. I have a desire. That's right to be with him. I want to tell you the more and the longer you live with the Lord and trust in God, you ought to have a people of God. I ought to have a longing for Jesus to come back. You ought to have a burning desire. Matter of fact, the scripture said, uh, boy, there was something burning on the inside with too many times. You, they said, man, he spoke and his word burned within us. Uh, there ought to be something on the inside of you uh, burning uh, that has a longing and a desire to be where he's that's why I'm going to tell you, if you don't want to go to heaven, they say, something wrong with you. Amen. Something wrong with you. Amen. Goes on to say this. Verse 26. For if we sin willfully. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> now, if you can sin willfully, that tells me you can also sin Accident. 
an accidental sin. Give a good example of accidental sin. An accidental sin <coughs> is when my mouth tries to say one thing, but my tongue makes me say something else. Yeah. And I don't realize it. And it hurts from my feelings. Yeah. They quit talking to me. And they start telling about that picture of me. I don't know what he said about me. And I never realized that. That's an accidental. But see, an accidental sin, until God brings it to your attention, ain't nothing you can do about it. Matter of fact, I'm going to hit on this real fast while I'm here. This is going to be okay. I'm just having a good time. Go let me tell you how God's people, how God said to handle problems in the church. Right. Come on. Can I just share with you how God said to handle problems in the church? God said in the Word of God, if you got a problem with somebody, the first thing you do is you go to leave. Amen. Amen. You don't go to Facebook. No. Whatever, whatever, my, anyway, all the other garbage. You don't go to all that air after dirty laundry. That's right. That's right. You've got to live first. Yeah. And say, brother, I'm sorry. I messed up. Will you forgive me? Yeah. Right. And if they don't, the Bible said, then you go get two or three witnesses. Yeah. Right. Come back and try it again. Amen. You still don't wear your dirty laundry. Right. You still keep your mouth shut. Stay off the internet. Right. And if that don't work, then you go before the church. Yeah. See, and when you follow that protocol, see, you got to say God has a solution for every problem the church Amen. has to And when you follow that protocol, nobody won't get mad. Amen. That's right, church won't bust up. Yeah. Gossip won't spread. Yeah. Lies won't be told. Yeah. Feelings won't be hurt yeah. when you go to the Word of God and do what God says do in His book. But the problem is, most people do not know what God's book said. Amen. That's right. That's right. But the scripture said, if we sin willfully. Yes. Willful sin is when I know not to tell a lie. Yeah. And I tell that book anyway. <laughs> and God, the thing that separates lying sin from other sin is when you lie. If all get by with just one. <coughs> because what happens is you end up, you're telling up, you're telling up, and you're telling up. My son will have a lot of times in it. You can get what you told the stop and you got to tell one lie because it's the last lie, and you didn't know what you told the stop with. But you know, like I told my wife says, she said, you can tell so much stuff. And like I said the other week, if I believe they could have lied. <laughs> But that's the sin he's talking about here. It goes on and says this. If we sin willfully, mm -hmm. after we have received the knowledge of the truth, that was after you've been born again. Yeah. See, you must understand. Before a man or woman is born again, sin to God is just sin. Yeah, right. Yeah. That's right. But after a man or woman is born again, <coughs> and they get mixed up or messed up in sin, mm -hmm. Let me tell you what it does. The scripture talks about you crucify the Christ yes, of Christ. Christ. Yes. Amen. Yes. And that's something that God takes personally. Yeah. The scripture said this. If we sin willfully after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remain no more sacrifice. For sin. No more sacrifice. No more sacrifice. Because what Jesus did, that was all it took. Yeah. All it took. Yeah. Because I just can't believe that it's as easy as that. Maybe it's easier than that. Yeah. 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 People have a harder time forgiving themselves than God does forgiving them. You're right. Amen. When you take it to the law, leave it there. Yeah. yeah. Don't take home and bring it back up to sleep. Don't let it be a yeah. talk your dinner conversation. Yeah. That's right. Leave it there. Yeah. But the Bible said it. If we see will, in other words, if we do wrong on purpose. 
I don't know any true believer, true child of God that really wants to wrong our purpose. True child of God. <coughs> you might mess up, like I said, yeah. but a true child of God don't want to do wrong on purpose. And it says this. There is no more sacrifice of sin, but a certain fearful looking for judgment. Mm -hmm. Verse 27. In fiery indignation which shall devour the adversaries. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Everything that you have done since you've been born again is going to answer for all of it. Amen. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know about you. Not that good for that. Amen. 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 While we're still, mm -hmm. we have time for it. And this right here is the part that bothers me. It said man will give an account for every hour of the word that proceeds out of the mind. That's why we need to watch what we say. Because once it comes up, Once one is told how she really feels about me, she can't take it back. <laughs> Last thing. <laughs> I just want to ask you a simple, simple question tonight. Is your heart really truly focused on the Lord? In your heart, truly, truly and whole, really focused on the Lord. Now, that's what God wants, guys. It's not enough just to be born again. We've got to be sold out. We've got to be sold out. Whatever you need, bring it Go ahead, brother.